It happened. It happened. What's up, Finn fans? So, woke up, checked my Twitter, and Adam Gase has been released and or fired from the Miami Dolphins. Um, he's now gone, and Tannenbaum has resigned or is being moved to a different position uh, besides the VP of operations, which, thank God. Chris Greer is getting somewhat promoted. I don't know if he's not the GM anymore. I think he is still the GM. But I think they took Tannenbaum's job and uh, Greer's job and just gave it to Greer. I think he's just the one and all because he's now searching for a head coach. I have some notes about why Gase was fired, about the discussion between Ross. I have the, uh, some other things. But before I get into that, I'm just going to run down the list of coaches who have been fired today. Todd Bowles is out for the Jets. Adam Gase obviously out for the Dolphins. Vance Joseph is out for the Broncos. Dirk uh, Cotter, Cooter? Cotter Cooter is out for Tampa Bay. Marvin Lewis is out in Cincinnati. That's a big one because Marvin Lewis has been with this team through it all. And everyone kept thinking he was getting fired. He didn't get fired. Finally fired. Mike McCarthy obviously out with Packers. And Steve Wilkes is out with Arizona after only one season there. So now let's get back into Adam Gase after giving you that rundown of coaches. So Gase is fired, like I said. Greer promoted from GM to essentially everything he's reporting to the owner. So essentially what I'm hearing with the players, and this is the tweet from Chris uh, Kaufman, he says, I heard a surprising number of veterans, including surprising ones like Frank Gore, Kenny Stills, and especially Cameron Wake, all rose up and disavowed Gase privately. Wake and Stills directly to Stephen Ross. Kenyon Drake wanted a trade if Gase remained. It wasn't even the fact of... Um, the, the owners wanting to go, the owner wanted to go in a different direction. It was the players wanted nothing to do with Gase anymore. Another, Omar Kelly tweeted out, the Dolphins players were tremendously bothered by Adam Gase's loyalty and excuse making for Ryan Tannehill. He lost a lot of support in the locker room in the second half of the season. It became clear players didn't want Gase back and aren't Tannehill fans either. A lot of, a lot of, as they like to call it nowadays, a lot of teas being spilled. So it, it had to really not do with Adam Gase as you know play caller and stuff like that it had to do more as Adam Gase as a head coach on why he was fired because obviously you're hearing from a ton of people and a ton that the players wanted him gone because he was just not a great head coach and it probably had to do with Kenyon Drake not being used properly it had to do with the play calling and then a lot of people wanted him, a lot of the players wanted him gone because he was backing Tannehill at all costs and he wanted Tannehill at all costs so the players wanted Tannehill gone. The players wanted Gase gone. You're gonna get both players, so hopefully you guys stay. Those are some of the news that popped up just now. And then you have Jarvis Landry, who was laughing at the fact that Adam Gase got fired. Jordan Phillips is laughing at the fact that Adam Gase got fired. But Jarvis Landry shouldn't be laughing because supposedly Adam Gase might be one of the top candidates for the Browns job. <laughs> so maybe he'll trade him back to the Dolphins. What do you guys think of that? We get Jarvis Landry back from the Browns. It seems like this team right now is going into rebuild mode, is going into a younger mode, and, you know, this is what Stephen Ross had to say about the free agent market and what he's looking for. He said he doesn't want a bunch of old free agents. Where will we be? Will we be anywhere 6-10 and 10 to 10-6? 10 and 6? That's not good enough. I would hope I don't go 13-10. and 10 but whatever it's going to take to build the organization. Ross wants a young roster, young free agents. Didn't use rebuild, but it's a clear message. So obviously, this team is going in a completely different direction, but you can see how they have the building blocks. They have players like Vincent Taylor, Gotchow, uh, Nika Fitzpatrick, Xavier Howard, Kenyon Drake. You know, they have these young core players that they could build around and that they could succeed with. So. I'm going to do a free agent video uh, real soon, like really soon probably, just to see who's going to, I'll start it with like who should go on the Dolphins, but there are a lot of older players that after reading what Stephen Ross just had to say are probably gone. Like Cameron Wake, unless he takes the hugest pay cut and takes like a couple million a year, he's probably gone because they want to build this team up to be a championship team. Stephen Ross is tired of going mediocre, eight and eight, six and ten, ten. Like he wants to 
12 and four, 12 and four, 13 and three. I don't think I've ever really seen the Dolphins do that. And that would be ecstatic for that to be the constant for the Miami Dolphins is just beating the Patriots and being always in contention for the first and second seed. I, I would love that. So this, if it takes them to tear it all down, rebuild it to get to that status, to be constantly wanting to see constantly, who do you have the Dolphins? Who do you have winning the Super Bowl? Dolphins. Who do you have to win the division? Dolphins. Dolphins like always being, it's like a year of six and 10, five and 11, whatever you say, just to get that team that is constantly the top echelon and the, the, the most dominant team in the NFL. Again, Adam Gase is gone. Greer's the new head dude ski in uh, Miami. He's pretty much looking over everything. How do I feel about that? Uh, I don't know if he's the one who passed on Dirt to get Gazicki. I'm not, I'm not sure if he's the one who thought it was a great idea to have two tight ends that possess the qualities that we want in one and skip on a defensive tackle to take Smythe. It's like, I don't know who made those decisions, but if it was Greer, I'm like, you're an idiot. But if Gates is like, no, 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 we should do this. No, 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 this is the scheme I want. No, 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 then, okay, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with what's going on. Before I get into the candidates that are talked about for the Miami Dolphins and some of the, the head coaching candidates that are out there, uh, Dan Campbell. A lot of you guys like Dan Campbell. Um, he was the guy who we beat the crap out of the Texans and the Titans with him. He was Mr. Urr after Joe Filman got fired. He's interviewing with the Browns and the Packers. So there's a potential with him to get a head coaching job, which he did a pretty good job, so I don't see why that's you know, a big thing. But let's get into possible candidates and names that are out there for the Dolphins to be looking at or are looking at. The first one is John Harbaugh. Now, he's with the Ravens, but there's talks about a contract extension. And if the contract extension goes south, there's maybe a potential of compensation and a potential of picks to get John Harbaugh. Now, will they do that? Will they sacrifice giving up picks and, and rebuilding to get John Harbaugh? I don't think so. I think if he stays as their head coach and the contract extension goes south, I don't really see them um, trading anything away, being that they just talked about wanting to rebuild and go younger and more experienced. So John Harbaugh has to literally be cut if they want to get him. Next is Jim Harbaugh, his brother from Michigan. Now, Stephen Ross loves Michigan. Stephen Ross is a Mi Michigan alumni, so Stephen Ross isn't going to take their head coach away from them. Um, but there is talks that the Jets might want to get Jim Harbaugh. If that's the case, if all of a sudden Jim Harbaugh's like, all right, I'll listen to the Jets, all right, that's a potential. And all of a sudden Jim Harbaugh starts showing that he wants to come back in the NFL and that he wants to leave college football, then Stephen Ross might step in and be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Michigan man, why don't you come down to Miami? Don't go to the Jets, don't go to this team, you know. So there's that potential, depending on how that all plans up, pays out. Then we have Mike McCarthy. We all know who Mike McCarthy is. We all know what he did with the Packers. Um, do you? Do I want Mike McCarthy? Not really, because you couldn't really win with Aaron Rodgers, and then you started mortgaging the team. I don't know, again, if that was the GM or the head coach, but I'm, I've, of all the names on this list I'm about to give you, I think Mike McCarthy's like near the bottom. You got Josh McDaniels. So Josh McDaniels burned the Colts to stay with the Patriots. Now, would Josh McDaniels burn the Patriots to go with the Dolphins to face his guy, every, you know, his head coach every year, twice a year? I don't know, but I think that'd be really intriguing. Like, Josh McDaniels, you you pitch that to him. Like, look, you get the quarterback you want, you, get, you do what you want. You know, Chris Greer is here, you gotta report to him. But, you know, you get to face Bill Belichick twice a year. You get to face your, you, you know, your teacher twice a year. You want to come to Miami? I don't think that's going to happen. I think Josh McDaniels is the heir apparent to the New England Patriots. You got Rex Ryan. Yesterday it was reported, and I retweeted, that Rex Ryan is out there putting a, t a coaching staff together because he wanted the UM job. But then their defensive quarter came back, didn't go to Temple. So then all of a sudden they're like, hey, he wants to go to the Dolphins because it was the UN job or the Dolphin job that he wanted. He started putting his coaching staff together. 
I don't know how I feel about Rex Ryan. He took the Jets to two AFC Championship games. Other than that, he didn't even do anything. So maybe defensive coordinator, depending on the head coach we get. But I don't know about head coach. We have Brian Flores. He's the Patriots defensive coordinator. He was hired in New England in 2004. Supposedly he's interviewing for the Green, Green Bay job as well. Um, I don't know. And then there's Jim Caldwell, who with the, the Colts went 62-50. and 50, And then with the Lions, two consecutive 97 seasons. Gets fired after that for the mediocrity. I don't know if he's a potential for a head coach for the Dolphins. I want that head coach, like I said, that 12 and 4, 13 and 3, 14 and 2 every year. So I don't know if Jim uh, Jim Caldwell is that type of coach for that. Dan Campbell is another option. He's interviewing with the Browns or the Packers, you know, could bring him back, see what he can do for us. And then other college coaches besides Harbaugh, you have Stanford's David, David Shaw, you have Oklahoma's uh, Lincoln Riley, all these potentials out there. Who would I like? I would like one of the Harbaugh's. Um, again, if Jim Harbaugh was like, you know, look, I want to coach in the NFL again, then cool. Get him, you know, for a fact, Stephen Ross is going to put a full parade out to get Jim Harbaugh. So, you know, that's what I, I know so far. Um, <clears throat> I told you guys I was going to make a video today. I told you guys Black Monday, crazy things are going to happen. So. Comment below, let me know what you guys think about the fact that Adam Gase got fired because the players didn't want him and the players hated that he stuck with Tannehill and made, you know, excuses for Tannehill and all that stuff. Let me know what you guys think about the, some of the candidates that I named. Let me know if there's some candidates that you're thinking of. Let me know what you think about the other coaches' firings. Speaking of that, let me get to your comment of the day from yesterday's video. This one comes from Scotty, and he said, We only won basically because of the defensive takeaways. Dolphin fans hope Gase is gone. He's just bad in general as a head coach. Scotty, you got your wish. Gase is gone, and I do agree with you. A lot of the games that we won, that we might or shouldn't have won was because of the defense and the takeaways. We lead the league in takeaways. So if those defensive takeaways didn't happen, our record would probably be what a lot of people predicted around the 5-4 win record. So good on you, Scotty. But that's the video. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. A lot of things are going to be happening, and I'm going to be tweeting it out a lot before I can sit down and make a video, edit it, and upload it. So like today, I woke up, saw the Gaze thing happen, took my notes, sitting down at videoing it recording it then i gotta edit it then i gotta upload it so if you want things for me right away because it's hard for me to do the posts on youtube because you have to like i can't put things in there that i want to be sure to follow me on twitter uh go follow my second channel the bit boys we put videos out every wednesday thursday friday saturday we got some cool games coming out so be sure to go over there check it out if you like video games we're almost at 300 if you can help us break 300 subs that'd be amazing give this video a thumbs up because hey gase is out we're hearing that the players want to gase out, so now the players are going to be happy. You know, hopefully they start resigning the young up-and-coming players. Kenyon Drake won't be traded. Hopefully Adam Gase goes to the Browns and Jarvis Landry is pissed. And yeah, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. This is just the beginning of the off-season videos I'm making. There's a ton of stuff I got planned for you guys. A ton of I'm gonna go live at some point, talk about certain things that are happening. So. Be sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys real soon. More news and notes. You know for a fact you're getting a video from Dudley Do Wrong. So, like usual, stay classy. And, uh...